So the other thing about inflammatory markers, which I think is interesting, is we, you heard this morning that the Lyme testing is not very reliable. In fact, I don't even do an ELISA. I never bother with it because the test is so unreliable. I go straight to the Western blot and tick-borne co-infection panels. There are other tests for checking Lyme, like the iSpot test, lymphocyte transformation tests. Um, it's the Ellie spot test that they do in Germany. There are many different forms, advanced labs, PCRs, culture. But the problem is you can only cure Lyme at an early stage. And the problem is the antibodies don't necessarily form until weeks later if you're lucky enough to get an IgM response. And what's interesting about the IgM response is the IgM antibodies are positive not just in early Lyme, but in late Lyme. And that was published by Alan Steer back in the late 80s. So if you get a patient with a positive IgM Western blot who's chronically ill, that's not a false positive. That's actually much more common. When Brian Fallon did the Columbia study and he was checking people for Lyme, and Dr. Bransfield talked about it this morning, he had to screen through 3,600 people with no neurological Lyme to get 36 positive CDC IgG Western blots with five bands on it. It was one out of 100, okay? You're not gonna get CDC positive IgG Western blots in the majority of the patients.